It has been an honor for me to work with my next guest. She's the president and CEO of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, which has helped countless people all over the world, from impoverished Jewish families to Holocaust survivors, and most recently, They've been at the forefront of helping evacuate elderly Jewish people from the war-torn mess in Ukraine as they're being bombarded by Russia. Here to tell us about the IFCJ's latest projects, please welcome my dear friend, Yale Eckstein. Yale, it's so nice to have you here. Welcome. Thank you, Governor. I actually feel at home. I'm with one of my most favorite people in the world in the studio that I love most. So thank you for having me back. We are glad to have you back. You've been with us in the studio. You've been with us remotely back when uh, the first week or so of the uh, ongoing issues of Ukraine. You guys have been very involved in helping not only to evacuate some Jewish people out of harm's way, but to also bring supplies. Tell us about what you've seen, what your volunteers and your staff have seen there. Well, it's heartbreaking. I think for anyone who's been following what's happening in Ukraine, you know the level of pain and mourning. There's almost no one who hasn't lost a family member of fear, and I think especially for the people that the fellowship helps, the most vulnerable, the Holocaust survivors, that this is the second time in their life that they've seen their country try to be destroyed and people needlessly killed and murdered. And so I think the fellowship comes to not only bring the basic needs of food and medicine, which they literally can't live without, but also this hope when we say Christians in America are sending this aid to you because they love you, they pray for you, they stand with you. You know, Governor, that's just important as the food that keeps them alive. Most people, even those who are contributors, probably don't understand that you give more help to people in poverty than even the Israeli government does to the Jewish people of Israel. Well. First, I, when I hear you say that, I just say, wow, praise God, what a huge privilege and yeah. honor. And actually, the Israeli government comes to the fellowship asking us to distribute their aid mm. to different basic food items and medicine and emergency support to the poorest populations of Israel because the fellowship has developed a system where we can distribute it quicker and more effectively even than the government. So the government is amazing, don't yeah. get me wrong. We are apolitical. We work with whatever government sure. is elected in Israel. And the Ministry of Welfare, who we work so closely with, is so committed to helping the people of Israel. And I think it's from that commitment that they see an opportunity to distribute aid effectively through the fellowship, and they take those steps to do that. The logistics of the fellowship, you mentioned that in terms of why the Israeli government comes to you. I mean, you have extraordinary facilities and trucks and all sorts of things that make this possible. What's amazing is also our ability through our volunteers and partners to shift when we need to and create new programs immediately. So I'll give you an example, Governor. Okay. The fellowship had the last Aliyah flight to Israel from Ukraine before the war. I was in Kiev four days before the invasion broke out, surrounded by 100,000 Russian troops. It was a little bit scary flying that in there. That would be, yeah, yes. Yeah. But we had the last Aliyah flight out of Ukraine before the invasion and the first Aliyah flight from Moldova after the invasion, mm. when we had tens of thousands of Jewish people crossing over the border of Ukraine to Moldova and saying, bring us to Israel. The airspace was closed. The airport in Moldova was closed. So we got special humanitarian permission to fly chartered flights into the Moldova airport where they opened just for our flights. We packed these airplanes with 15 tons each of humanitarian aid that would be sent into Ukraine, unloaded the humanitarian aid, loaded the flights with Jewish immigrants to Israel, flew them home to Israel, and then turned around, did the exact same thing. It is an incredible thing that you guys are able to do. I've been with you when we've been to the home of an elderly Jewish person, survivor of the Holocaust, who lives three stories up and hadn't been out of her apartment for over eight years because she couldn't manage the steps up and down. To deliver that box of food was more than the food. It was the, the embrace, the touch, Yes. the human compassion. Yes. How can people help keep that going? 
Well, God says that we should not forsake or forget those who are elderly, that we should stand up in the presence, not just turn our eyes from it. And so this is the fellowship's way of standing up in the presence of elderly, finding those who haven't left their home in years, who don't have any family support, who have no one, and going with the food box and saying, millions of Christians love you. Not just one person, yeah. not just me, not just Governor Huckabee who are walking up these stairs bringing the food box. This is on behalf of millions of people. And I'm always so humbled by that. So um, of course, via our website, www.ifcj.org, people could get all the information, join this huge grassroots effort where it's one person and one person and one person coming together to help last year over two million Jewish people. Wow. It's a phenomenal organization and ministry, and I'm very proud that we're affiliated with it as uh, you're one of the partners of our show, and we are proud of what the fellowship is doing. Yael, thank you very much. It is always a joy to be in your presence. And I hope you'll learn more about the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews and how you can get involved and help with their important mission. It's real simple. If you visit Huckabee.tv, we will connect you. There'll be a direct link to the fellowship, and I hope you will give. People sometimes will come up to me and say, hey, that thing you talk about on your show, that uh, Fellowship of Christians and Jews, is that a good organization? And I always say, I wouldn't be encouraging you to give if I hadn't witnessed with my own eyes the great work that they do.